Uh, with that, uh, Senator Carper, you are recognized uh, for your questions. Thanks. Can you hear me, can you hear me Mr. Chairman? I can, loud and clear. Good. Thanks, thanks so much. Uh, our, uh, thanks to our, our witnesses for joining us today for your input. I've been a member of this committee uh, for Homeland Security Committee, Government Affairs, for uh, 20 years. And uh, one of my uh, favorite memories of serving on this committee uh, came at the end of, uh, of, uh, of the tragedy, and that was the attack on 9 11. And a, uh, a bipartisan commission was created. Uh, the co chairs were Lee Hamilton, one of my mentors in the House of Representatives, Congressman from Indiana, who, as I recall, chaired the Foreign Relations Committee. And a uh, fellow uh, who's a neighboring and a governor from our neighboring state of uh, New Jersey, uh, Tom Kane. And uh, the uh, uh, Republican, and the two of them provided great leadership. The, the panel included the uh, former uh, Secretary of the Navy, John Layman, just a bunch of wonderful people. And uh, they worked uh, together uh, on the heels of 9-11 and uh, pr pr produced, I think, something like 41, unanimously, 41 recommendations to Congress and the President at the time, uh, George W. Bush, 41. And we enacted, I think, about 36 of them, 36 of them, which is pretty amazing when you think about how hard it is to get stuff done around here today. Uh, but I have a, a question. I think we need to create a 9-11 style commission to look at the failures that uh, led to the devastating attack on our capital on January 6th. It was like we needed one 20, 19 years ago. Uh, a question, if I can, for the Sunborn. Uh, do you agree with the need for a, a commission, uh, sort of 9 uh, 9-11 like commission, nonpartisan, led by just terrific uh, citizen human beings? Do you agree that uh, with the need for a commission to analyze what went wrong? Go ahead, please. So you broke up a little bit, but I think you're asking me if I agree that something so I, I, can, I think I can barely hear you. I, I think you asked me, you're breaking up a little bit and hard to hear, yeah. that do I agree that something similar to a 9-11 commission is worth having in this instance? And I think that I would was just, my question, yes. I think I would just say it this way. I've been involved in numerous after actions, lessons learned, and I can't think of a time where we haven't learned and improved. So I think any time we can reflect back and learn, it's value added. Yeah, how, how, a follow-up question to that, if I could. How can we ensure that a new 9-11 uh, style commission examines the root causes, not just the symptoms of problems, but a big root cause now? And, uh, but how can we make sure that if we were to establish a 9-11 style commission, we would examine the, the root causes? And that includes the threats uh, posed by domestic terrorists. If I understand your question, you're asking me, how do we ensure we have a 9-11 commission that's set up to do a good job, yeah, and I, yeah, I don't so know that I... So we're not just looking at the, uh, the symptoms of the problem, but like the root causes of the problem. Yeah, the root cause. I don't have any specific examples of how best to set that up. Um, I've never been invo necessarily involved in, in, in picking sort of the road ahead and picking and selecting the team that does the review, um, but I have always benefited from the review. Well, maybe part of it is for us as, uh, as uh, members of the, 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 the Congress is to make clear uh, if there were to be a commission that, our interest in certainly includes uh, focusing on the root causes the threat posed by domestic terrorists and make sure that the leaders of that bipartisan commission be committed to, uh, to uh, examine the root causes. Maybe that would be good. Um, a second question, if I can, for uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Um, and This is a question related to intelligence failure. A large a part of, of our conversation from last week's hearing focused on law and intelligence for the FBI. That we shared, uh, I believe, by email just the evening before on January 5th uh, with a, a lower level uh, person and uh, at the uh, Metropolitan Police Department. Uh, and it was not shared with uh, any senior official, even though we had seen that actual intelligence that something awful was going to happen the next day that could lead to murder and mayhem. But, uh, uh, Senator Carper, I, it's a little hard to hear you. I know our witnesses are, yeah. you might want to just speak a little louder and slower or something. Yeah, it's, it's your, right. it's not you, it's your, uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, usually it's me, but this time I think it's <laughs> me. Um, but uh, my, uh, I guess my question is, can, can, what, what happened? Somebody knew something awful could happen. Somebody knew, and they sent an email the evening before the event. I mean, that, why would, why would somebody just pick up the phone and call us a senior official and say, we just have this information, and as we're like 12 hours away, we need to do something. And somebody can still doing that, send an email. Uh, could, uh, Ms. Samuel, uh, could you just shed some light on 
how exactly we missed some of the grave warning sites until like the very last minute. How does that happen? Yeah, thank you for the question, sir. I think I'll start with um, the piece of information we received, again, was a non-attributable posting to a message board. And so very raw, very unvetted. We actually didn't receive that information until late, very late in the afternoon on the 5th and almost into the evening. And because of our emphasis on we need any intelligence, even though it was raw, unattributed, and unvetted, the Norfolk office quickly wrote that up, specifically in a document following our processes to disseminate that. So a situation information report is for the intentional purpose of sharing that with state and local partners. Not only did they write that up because they knew how important it was to get that information out into hands of folks that might need it, uh, our state and local partners, within 40 minutes they sent an email to the Washington field office with that information and Washington field office also then followed up with an email to all task force officers and so Several different mechanisms were happened here, and you know we like to use the phrase belt and suspenders. We didn't want to make sure that one method of communication failed, so we wrote it up in the document for dissemination. We sent it in an email to all task force officers in the National Capital Region, and that does include um, Washington Metro as well as Capital. But again, not wanting to rely on those two mechanisms only, it was then briefed verbally in a command post, an interagency command post, that we were doing briefings every couple of hours so that every agency in that command post had what we call a common operating picture knowing what all of us knew at any given time it was briefed at 8 p.m. on the evening of the 5th and then taking it one step further because we didn't want to limit our aperture to just the national capital region because there's collection opportunity out there for all state and local partners and federal partners to help us we loaded that suspicious information report into what we call the leap portal and that is accessible by all state and local partners so we really tried in various ways to make sure that we did not rely on one communication mechanism and really tried to rely on several so that the information would get to the right people. Yeah. I, I'll close with this. I, I don't know if anybody picked up the phone and called somebody in charge and said, we've got a problem. And uh, we're 12 hours away from seeing the, uh, that problem up front and in person. We need to do something. And all well and good about sending around emails and helping people and that sort of thing. But somebody should just pick up the phone and say, we need to do something. This is over. I'm not sure to go that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Senator Carpenter.